Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious and welcome to a brand new guide and tutorial video. Now today, a little bit of a difference between some of those older videos where I do guides and tutorials. It's usually showing you how to use someone else's computer software, but today the guide is actually showing you how to use one that I wrote. Now calling it a program is kind of a far stretch. It's just auto it scripting. And this particular one that I'm showing you today was, was very short and easy. Nothing too complicated about it but somebody out there is going to find it very helpful. So I wanted to go ahead and share it out with everybody and of course show you how to use it. Now the thing is that it has to be configured for each and every person's computer separately because it's relying on X, Y coordinates and based on your resolution and your settings, yours is going to be different than mine. So that's the part I wanted to show you in the video. Now what is it? All right, so you know my background. Besides being a techie guy, I was a huge gamer back in the day. I don't play games too much anymore, too busy for it, especially like full-blown PC games. So most of my gaming nowadays is on my phone, but I hate being stuck to my phone all the time. So I often play my phone games on my computer using an emulator. That's what this is. Nox App Player is an Android emulator for your PC. And that lets me play my Android games on my computer where I'm more comfortable. More importantly, in this game in particular, Final Fantasy, um, the macro feature that this emulator has lets you like replay pre-recorded strokes in the game and lets you automate playing the game and uh, save a lot of time on those grindy things now the macros the way that they work is you have the play buttons you have to manually click on those with your mouse and they're they're kind of tiny and uh, it's easy to miss them now if you're just starting something nonchalantly like a start it and leave it kind of thing like my bottom two macros are they run overnight so I just press play and leave it these first two here um, are actually time-based they're for using inside of combat for a combo and I have to usually click on something inside of the game and then click on that in very quick succession and it might be very difficult sometimes to land directly on this and click it in time so that's where the program comes in what the program does is it interfaces with Knox and it will click on these arrows for you faster than humanly possible and it does so with the press of a keyboard key or a hot key. So let me just show you real quick. If I press, uh, I have these set for F1, F2, F3, and F4 on my keyboard. If I press F4 real quick, it's going to... Oh, I didn't start the program. Let me start the program. So I've got it running now. If I press F4, and that was F3, F4, you can see my mouse will move from where it's located and press those things faster than I can humanly do so and it never misses and it always brings me right back to where I started making it basically just as good as a legitimate hotkey that doesn't touch anything else in the game now let's show you it in action let's go to this current event right now and I'll show you how I use this so I'm gonna grab a friend this current event attack on Titan All right, let's do some damage. All right, so what I'm doing here, these bottom two guys are my combo guys, my chain guys. They're going to need to attack really quickly at the same time to give me a good combo. And that's what my macro does here, this second macro. It's going to press these two as quickly as possible. But because it's moving as quickly as possible, it'd be too quick for it to click on the third person that is going to finish that combo. So I need to use my human timing for clicking on this person and use the computer to click on these two. So instead of clicking on this and then moving my mouse up here and hoping to click on this arrow fast enough or accurately enough, now all I'm going to do is click on this and then press my F2 key. So watch this. Click and F2. And that was all you have to do. Never messes up. So again, F1, first macro, F2, second macro, F3, third macro, F4, fourth macro. And they're based on position. So if I was to scroll down my macros, these arrows actually line up. So I can run it on different macros and you'll still hit them just fine. As long as you're not in the, the halfway spot like this. All right, so that's how it works, that's what it does. Now if you're interested in it, this is how you set it up. Because there was no way for me to interface with Knox directly through keyboard commands or with uh, 
different com objects and hooks and stuff. There was just no way to do it. I had to go the good old fashioned brute force uh, coordinate method. And because resolution will change for every person based on their monitor resolution, based on their emulator settings, um, we can't program it to be always the same thing. It has to be different for different people. So I wrote the program in such a way that you can do that. Once you download this file, wherever I decide to share that from, inside of it's going to be uh, a program called CV, Control Viewer, the source code for what I wrote, the actual compiled program of what I wrote, so you can run it directly, and then the INI file is what configures it. So we're going to open up our INI file. And you can see that we have four macros. We have three values. One's the hotkey that we're going to use, so you can change that. You can make it F5, F6, F7, F8. You can make it A, B, C, and D. You can change it to whatever you want. And then the X and Y coordinates of the play button off of that macro menu. So let's drop this out of the way. We're going to open up one more thing first, actually. Control Viewer. I download. It's included with your download. Grab that. Uh, change this to Window. If it's on Absolute, put it on Window. And grab your Browse tool and drag it over to the, your, the middle of your arrow. So mine is going to be at 275 on the X and 110 for the Y. So here it is, 275, 110. I plug those values in on my INI file. Repeat that process for the other three arrows and get your coordinates. Plug them into the INI file, save it, and then lo load the program up. Now it's running in the background right now. The way to exit it would be pressing the escape key. I have the escape key set up as a hotkey to exit the program. So I just pressed escape to exit it. It is no longer running. If I want to run it again, I can just go in here, double click it, and it's running again. So that's how you tune it, guys. That's what it does. I know that half of you guys are probably coming in from Reddit that play the game, and I'm going to share it with everybody on Reddit. The other half of you are uh, my YouTube subscribers for techie stuff. For those guys, I did get my Cisco CCNA, CCNA CyberOps certification recently. I passed that, no problem. And uh, I will have some more really cool techie tutorials coming up down the road when I get some free time for recording. Uh, another video coming soon for another program I wrote. A much more complicated program than this. Also tailored for this game and the emulator. So stay tuned for that video. It's going to be a really cool one. This was Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.